Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petite Garden Centers and we're here in our Oakwood Village location. By the way, some folks ask us, where are you located? We're in Northeastern Ohio. That's where all of our Petite Garden Centers are. We have nine locations here. Um, so Northeast Ohio, keep that in mind um, when we're growing things. Sometimes we don't know how things grow for you down in Texas or out in California or over in Europe. But I will tell you with house plants, it's pretty easy. They grow very, very similarly for all of us. So today we're gonna do a plant spotlight on primrose, yay! And primrose is also known as primula, this variety that you see most commonly in late winter, early spring to give us some more color in our homes. And uh, later we can plant them outside, but not just yet. So um, we're in February and we wanna make sure that we're taking care of our primrose correctly. So primrose is primrose polyantha, okay? And this type of primrose is nice and short, compact, makes a really cute addition to your desk or your kitchen or wherever you want some color and then also some fragrance too. Okay, so what do primrose like? They basically love those bright, indirect lighted area. So if you get a lot of light through a lot of windows, that's awesome, no problem. They really don't appreciate the direct, direct sun because it provides too much heat. And we're gonna find out here that that's really not a friend to primrose. So bright indirect lighting is awesome. You basically uh, can place them in a north window, great, no problem, or pull them about five to six feet away from an eastern, southern, or western window, and that works very, very well for them. Uh, temperature wise, oh, I should have mentioned, when we get them outside in the spring, you can plant them in shady spots to part shade. So like the most sun that they really can tolerate is six hours, but I'd try to keep them in the shadier aspects, okay? And they'll do just fine out in the garden. As far as temperatures are going, this is key with primrose. They really like cooler temperatures, about 55 to 65 degrees. So if you keep your house warmer, this is gonna be a plant that you're continually going to have to irrigate, kind of stay on top of. And if you can keep them in a cooler spot, again, it's really gonna be better and they're going to really flower for you much longer. Um, so 55 to 65 degrees, uh, cooler room, even if you have that northern exposure window that might be a little bit drafty, that's actually okay for the primrose. So they do really like those cooler, the cooler end of temperatures there. Once we get a little bit warmer in spring, you can start acclimating them outdoors. When we start to get above freezing, get into the 40 degree mark, and it continues to stay and even increase from there, that's when you can start taking them out and going ahead and acclimating them. And then of course you can plant them in containers, you can plant them in the ground. They work just about anywhere, again, out in some shady spots, okay? So temperature wise, that's great, keep them cool. With watering, they like to be planted in a well-drained potting soil. And when you're watering, you're irrigating them completely, moistening that potting soil, letting it drain out the bottom of the drainage hole. So you're gonna remove your, your pot cover if you do have one or your pot. Um, it, make sure if you're planting in pots, you've got really good drainage holes in the bottom and you have a drip tray or a drainage tray that that water can go into and then thoroughly watering or moistening that soil again, and then going ahead and letting it drain out. These plants do very well. You always wanna water in the morning. It doesn't matter what house plant we're talking about. So always water in the morning and then go ahead and let them utilize that water throughout the day. Depending on how much air circulation you have in the home, and again, the higher the temperatures you have, these plants can dry out pretty quickly. So just keep your eye on the watering. Of course, if, that, if the plant is wilting, obviously an indicator that you may need to water again. If the pot feels very, very light, you may need to water again. Okay, so just make sure you're watering thoroughly and deeply, letting that water drain out. 
don't let them sit in water. If they sit in water, they'll also look wilty, but you'll notice when you pick up the pot, it's gonna feel really heavy. So make sure that you let that water drain, that soil um, also dry out before you go ahead and irrigate again, okay? So keep that in mind with these guys. Fertilizer, we really don't have to feed primrose until we get into the growing season, okay? So again, late March, beginning of April, we can start fertilizing these plants. We can use a, an Osmocote, a pink label is usually really great for them. One application usually takes care of about four or five to six months. Um, so that will work out just fine for these guys. They really don't need a lot of fertilizer. You can use the plant tone uh, formulation outside when you plant them um, in the garden or in containers. That's fine too, okay? So um, not a lot of fertilizer just through the growing season until maybe October. October, okay, and then you don't have to worry about uh, feeding them again. When you're caring for the primrose, just make sure that you deadhead. So you're gonna find that flowers will die back, okay? And all you do is you're taking that spent flower and you're going all the way down its little stem or its pedestal and you're going all the way to the base as far as you can go and pinching. And I'm gonna show you there we go. So we have a spent flower, it's long little stem there, and I pinched as far as I could down into the center. When you're buying primrose, look in the center of the plant. When you open up these flowers, there should be more buds inside. So look for that too. The more buds you have down deep in the center of this plant and the flowers coming up, that means the longer you're going to be able to enjoy this flower as well. If you plant them outside, like I mentioned, they can be sort of um, short-lived perennials. They make great annuals out in those shady spots, of course. Um, but these guys, if you do get them to winter over and continue to expand, try dividing them in spring after they're done blooming. I know it's not what we normally talk about because we usually say you divide your perennials the opposite season they bloom, but primrose tend to die back completely down to the ground. So you might not even see them or remember where they are come fall. So that's why you want to go ahead and if your clump's getting too big and maybe it's not producing as many flowers as it could or as it has before, then go ahead and divide them right after they get done blooming before the heat of summer comes on. They are a neat plant because they're just so colorful for the spring. They are a spring ephemeral, so they do come up in the springtime again, fan of those cooler temperatures. So once the soil starts to sort of thaw out and we start to get some sun, we start to get a little bit increase in temperature, you will see your primrose pop up for you. They're a short-lived perennial in our area in North Northeastern Ohio. And part of the reason why is because they really don't like extremes in temperatures, or I should say more like extremes in how our weather occurs. So what happens with them is they really are hardy from zone three to zone eight. So they fall within our zone, our cold hardiness zone, no problem but they don't like the extreme of having a very, very dry winter. And then of course, moving into a really hot, humid summer. That's not their favorite thing. So if you can keep them protected outside, that's always going to be your best bet. So maybe closer to the home, a little bit more protected area where they're not getting desiccated by winter winds, that will always help, okay? Uh, so keep that in mind. I love that the primrose are fragrant. They really are wonderful. I find that the yellows are going to give off the most fragrance, and to me, they do smell like Fruit Loops. They have a very fruity fragrance to them. Uh, some of the other colors do have a fragrance too, but I, I still think yellow is usually the most fragrant out of all of them. They're just a wonderful bright color to, again, place anywhere inside your home, especially in winter when we kind of have the gray skies outside and we need some color inside. It's a wonderful plant to place in a cool, bright area. Okay, enjoy.